video is about fixing my GE microwave oven which had a uh, magnetron go out on it after uh, four years. Uh, first thing my wife did was um, look in the uh, internet and, and looked up the number to the regular GE warranty thing because it's only been four years. But they tried to sell her a new microwave. Hmm. And they also refused to give her a price for the magnetron replacement. They, they said, oh, it costs 85 to come to the house, but they wouldn't give her a price. We know it's a magnetron. It's, you know, it's all the symptoms. So um, I definitely wouldn't recommend GE appliances. Um, ended up to be, look, my research on the inter internet indicated $240 for what they, if I would have let them do what they wanted to do. So anyway, additional research on the internet, I found this page, which was very helpful. Um, it, uh, it talked, it, there's a long thread here and it talks, some of the stuff in the thread, by the way, is just parts people trying to sell their stuff. So if there's a link in the, in the notes here, don't go to it. They're just high price parts. Um, but I did call that number. That was the GE number. And they said, "Oh yeah, sure, we'll send one. We'll send one right out. So, uh, a new magnetron for under warranty. I just gave my serial number. So um, yeah, September of 2007 is when it's uh, built, and this is December, uh, January of 2011. Uh, excuse me, 12 now. So I did learn that the capacitor should be open, and the forward, backward, across the diode should be different, and the thermal sensor should be closed. So I could do those that testing right now. So I pulled the um, the diode out." And this is it, and uh, it's it's basically should cost about a dollar, but of course, you know, even if you get it from Hong Kong, it's about three dollars. Uh, but that's a fair price for it. But anybody that pays any more than about three bucks for this is is getting ripped off because this thing, you know, you can buy these all day long in a, in bulk for cents, literally. Um, so in order to test it, you need something a little bit more than the voltage that's inside your digital voltmeter. So I decided to hook it up to my car. This is only 12 volts. It's not a lot of volts. It's plenty of amps in a car, but it's it's just 12 volts. Um, so anyway, uh, so I just checked out to make sure I had it hooked up to the car correctly. And then you need a resistor. I just grabbed a resistor. I don't know what value it is. I just, um, I just uh, grabbed it and I just tested to see that there was some kind of voltage drop over this and, and uh, you know, it was um, a little bit. So um, yeah, it didn't really matter what resistor you, you use, I don't think. Um, I, again, I have no idea what, what, um, what value that resistor is, but I hooked this up to the, uh, the diode and I'm going to hook it up forward and backward. So, um, you hook it up backward. It should be, um, sort of stopping some voltage. You get up forward. It should be letting the voltage through. So hooking it up. Um, I don't know which way this is. I think it's backward right now. So it should be slowing down. It should be having a voltage drop over it as opposed to having the full voltage. Um, let's see what happens here. When I connect it, uh, or when I measure the, the voltage drop, it's going to the first, basically the first set of numbers where one, two, three, four, there's five sets of numbers. There's zero, one, two, three, four, five. And it's going to the first set of numbers there. The value doesn't really matter too much. It's just, it's just that it, if it's changing. So um, then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to hook it up the other way um, and see that it's different. Hopefully we'll see. I know I already reviewed the video and did this live. So um, uh, yeah, this audit, the, the uh, audio is coming on afterwards. Um, but anyway, hook it up backwards and then see how this tests out. And there's more. So, um, so it's it's doing something. Uh, no guarantee is doing the right thing, but I I would suspect that if it was blown, it would be um, not doing what it's what it's doing here. And of course, we'll see later, since I did successfully repair my microwave, that it didn't need to be replaced anyway. Yeah, I didn't replace anything except for the magnetron. And here we have uh, the magnetron showing up from the GE parts department. By the way, that number that was very nice. All they did was say, hey, you blow your warranty if you um, if you replace it yourself. And I said, fine. So this is what I got, a box inside of a box. And uh, inside the second box uh, was the replacement magnetron. And uh, pull it out here and it looks, um, I want to compare it with the with the one in the in the machine to make sure I don't, you know, pull it all out and then realize it won't even fit or is, is the wrong the wrong part so this is the part number they sent me and uh, here's the side of the mic the business side of the microwave with the cover off and looks to be the same in all regards 
um, there is the uh, thermal sensor that that you need to pull off and put on to uh, you know to, to to this new one so first thing I did was try to figure out how to get this existing magnetron out and you can see there's a couple of screws that are down there there's some holes you can sort of get at them through which is nice of the designers to do that for us and uh, a couple of screws on this side so basically got four screws holding it in and uh, here I'm going for the first screw um, down through the top here's the second screw and you can sort of get your finger up there or you can see uh, where where uh, this the screws are holding magnetron in so this is just all physical orientation of trying to get it out um, so I got one side out and um, I'm going to take this, these, uh, these other two out on this side. That's the wrong screw there. I shouldn't have taken that one out. I'm realizing, uh-oh, oh, no, don't need to take that one out. <laughs> Should have cut that out. Anyway, that's, that's, that's a screw that just holds the fan in. And I put that right back in. <laughs> Sorry about that. So then I took out the right screw, which has a little dab of green stuff on it so they can tell you monkeyed with it, I guess. Get that out of there. At that point, you can uh, you can jimmy it out of there. Just, just uh, pull it down a little bit. And uh, I was trying to be gentle in case uh, there was something I didn't know, because this will be the first time I opened this machine up. Um, so you can take these uh, connectors off of the uh, the thermal sensor. Um, they're not uh, polarized, so it doesn't really matter that uh, it's one way or the other. This one here, I um, I pulled this off and I looked at it and I didn't know if it was polarized or not for sure. So I just just to make just to make absolutely sure, I uh, I took my uh, sharpie and and just put an up arrow on it just so I you know knew that you know knew for sure how to put it back together you don't want any um, question when you're putting things back together um, you know especially if it's as easy as putting an up arrow on something so there we have it the uh, magnetron is is out and uh, I also labeled that one just just to make sure uh, uh, didn't put the bad one back in get them switched on the table somehow and just for the heck of it I decided well let's make sure that this um, this thermal sensor is doing what it's supposed to be doing and it it does sh conduct um, which is correct it should it should uh, should be a short because uh, you know if it if it got really hot it would open up and this is just uh, a test of the capacitor uh, another thing they try to sell you that you may or may not need um, and there I, I don't know that this is necessarily definitive but uh, a good capacitor will not will not show any um, conductance. So here I am taking the uh, the uh, thermal sensor and the associated bracket off. It's just held with one screw and so pulled that off of the the bag, bad magnetron and um, put it back onto or put it onto the new magnetron. And uh, I think I'm trying to see where it, the screw screw hole lines up or whatever these screws by the way they they're they're not th the uh, the uh, holes are not threaded so when you I was trying to see if it was threaded but basically it's not threaded so so you just have to just make yourself some new threads so you got to use a little bit of brute force uh, switch to the right hand and uh, this screw went right in as soon as I had some muscle behind it So now that's ready to go back in and uh, plug the connector for the the main high voltage power. By the way, I didn't mention, but this thing had been unplugged for weeks and I also shorted the uh, capacitor when I first pulled it out. I probably should have mentioned that because I'll probably, you know, get people saying, hey, why didn't you short, short the capacitor? Well, it, it, I, had, I had shorted it. I just didn't show it on the video on the early part of the video. Anyway, um, so I'm connecting up the, um, the thermal sensor here. And uh, getting it, getting the magnetron positioned back into, into the oven.
Yeah, I probably don't need all this detail, but I shot it for myself. You know, I, I did. I'm my own cameraman here, so that's why it's a little bit uh, might be a little bit uh, choppy at times. I do have a tripod, though, obviously. So now trying to get the screws back in. Not that difficult. I got this this first one in. Um, again, you have to make your own threads. And leave the screws, you, you know, you probably want to leave the screws a little bit loose. Um, you know, not, not torque them down all the way right away. And then um, after, you, uh, after you get all four screws in, um, you can go back and tighten them up. So leave it loose a little bit. And then these ones on the other side are a little bit, um, a little bit trickier. You gotta, you know, feed the screw in underneath there, and then get the screwdriver on it and and uh, get it started. But, but uh, not not too big of a deal. And the fourth one probably wouldn't need all this detail, but what the heck. And then go back and uh, tighten down that last fourth one, and and then go back and hit all the the remaining ones, tighten them up, and you're all set for uh, getting it mounted. Anyway, I still have to put the uh, the diode back in, which uh, I I did that last. As it turns out. Nope, not that one. Yeah. Okay, so Magtron's mounted and uh, connected. And here's the diode still outside of the, uh, the unit. And uh, I used a, a little um, screwdriver bit, which uh, you probably didn't see that, but you can't really get a full-size screwdriver in there. So if you have a stubby screwdriver, it would work. Or if you had an offset screwdriver like I do, then it would work. But uh, I just uh, used the offset screwdriver. And uh, you got to get, you know, I, I would uh, definitely triple check to make sure that that's tight. You definitely want this uh, properly grounded. So yeah, this is the time where I'll mention, you know, since we're showing the capacitor, that when I opened the microwave for the very first time, um, I, you know, I didn't do anything for a couple of days anyway. But uh, when I did, I put a couple of screwdrivers across that that uh, capacitor and there was no spark or anything like that because I think because this diode is what uh, drains it I don't know for sure but uh, anyway uh, I'm using the offset screwdriver to torque that um, that that ground screw that's part of the uh, the uh, the diode wire getting it nice and tight all right so checking it to make sure it's not loose or anything like that and so that's in there. Now I just need to reconnect the um, the diode, or excuse me, the um, the capacitor up with the high voltage wires. And I I did write myself a note that red went on top, just to uh, you know put it back exactly this is the way I found it. And in fact, one of the things that you need to concentrate on. And I've read on the on the forum uh, is that uh, that people have had trouble with with not placing these wires back where they found them. There, you don't want to let these wires uh, rub up rub up against anything. So when you take your microwave apart the first time, you definitely want to look at where the where the wires are and exactly you know how they're in there. And you want to go ahead and make sure that they're back exactly where you found them. If they were hanging in a certain way, make sure they're hanging in that same way when you when you put it back. Um, or if there's a clip or something on yours, you definitely want to um, make sure that uh, you get them back just just right. So I got to get the power cord hooked up, which is connected to the uh, to the to the uh, the outside case. So I connected the power cord and and put the case on. I plugged it in, and I'm going to do a little test here. And uh, just so it shows good on the video, I go ahead and uh, uh, measure the temperature of the water before and after just so it uh, just so it um, 
shows good on the video that it works. And so we're looking at 72 and a half, 72.8 degrees or whatever. Just uh, water out of the sink. And I'll put it in there for a few seconds. Had to set the clock on the thing to try to get it to uh, <laughs> get it to accept my uh, request to heat something. Um, but got it to run. Sounded right, by the way. You know, before it sounded too too buzzy, too loud. Now it sounds at like usual. So I'm pretty confident at this point that it's going to work. And uh, pull the uh, pull the glass out. And I'll show you the temperature here, and you can see that it's gone up by uh, a few degrees and uh, feels warm in my hand, so I know uh, it's going to work. So um, there you have it, a 93 degree water after a few seconds.